Thank you for that. Um, afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, my name's William Harrington. I'm a 2016 Nuffield Scholar from Northwest Queensland. Uh, before I start, I'd just like to say thank you to, if, to so many people to thank for the for a Nuffield Scholarship and what people who make it the once in a lifetime experience it is. So I'm just going to name a few. First of all, my wife Holly, who um, just gave birth to our second son last Tuesday, so she couldn't make it. Um, the Nuffield organisation um, itself for making this what it is, um, the rest of my family and my in, uh, investor John Deere, particularly Cheryl Friend and Fraser Scott. The Nuffield scholarship never ends and I hope I'm able to give something back to do my little bit. I'm going to start by just telling you a little bit more about myself. I'm a fourth generation cattle producer, um, grew up on a station called Olga Downs. It's only a small station, it's about 40,000 acres, about 2,000 head. Uh, I, in 2006, I graduated from James Cook University as a computer systems engineer, and we run two businesses on our station at the moment. Um, the first one, Harrington Systems Electronics, uh, which I founded in 2015, sorry, 2005, to commercialise an NLIS reader while I was still at university. Um, and last year, we founded Sky Queensland, which is a wireless internet service provider uh, that provides connectivity to cattle stations in our shire and to the town of Richmond itself. I've always had a passion for technology and I've been very, very lucky to be able to, to remain on the station with my engineering background and, and apply it to the beef industry. It's through these daily interactions with, um, with cattle producers through our businesses that I just, it became obvious how little technology was actually being used in day-to-day -day management of a cattle station. And really, yeah, I started to ask why. So my topic is barriers of adoption to technology in the northern beef industry. But first of all, what is technology? Normally when we think of technology, we think of the, the new iPhone 8 or another flash drone. But the dictionary definition is actually the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, especially industry. And a really good example of this is this green card here, developed by the International Rice Inst Research Institute. It's a simple piece of plastic with a couple of bits of colour on it. And that simple bit of plastic can help a rice farmer understand the health of their rice crop and raise their yields and increase their, living, their standards of living. And that piece of plastic to that farmer is no different to a camera out in a paddock watching a water trough. Lots of technology currently being used in the cattle station, or in the beef industry. Um, computers and smartphones, very, very common, but that really is just a reflection of, of the adoption of technology in society in general. Uh, a more specific example for the beef industry is, is NLIS, um, introduced in 2005, which means that every, all the cattle in Australia have to have an electronic RFID tag when they're moved, and, and the trends, so, and the RFID number has to be recorded, so it's traceability. But there's also a lot of te other technology that is there, ready and available for beef producers if they wanted to, to use it, uh, including remote monitoring, tech remote monitoring cameras, tank levels, that sort of thing. Individual animal management using NLIS, there's a lot of software packages. Um, walkover weighing, like we saw from um, Gina this morning, that lets you weigh cattle and draft them in the, out in the paddock without having to handle them. DNA testing, water medication, just to name a few. It's also a lot of up and coming technologies like virtual fencing and drones. Keeping this in mind, it was time to travel. By the time I'd returned home after my scholarship, I'd travelled to 15 countries over five continents. I was able to see the beef industry in many, many different countries, ranging from the first world to the third world. And it became apparent very, very quickly that agriculture works differently everywhere you go. And every industry, everywhere you go, agriculture has different challenges. This table summarises the key findings from my travels. Um, and whilst it's sort of pretty obvious that we share a few challenges with countries like New Zealand and Japan, the combination of challenges we face in the Australian beef industry are unique. The, high, the large distances, the high cost of labour, the lack of government support and low prices for our product. But despite this, we are still one of the best, most efficient industries in the world, beef industries. 
So why does the northern beef industry need to embrace technology? In 2005, MLA re released the Northern Beef Report, which the summary or the conclusion was that the majority of northern beef producers are not economically sustainable. Whilst there's been a bit of short-term relief with the current high prices, it still doesn't fix the fundamental problem of unprofitability. Good, this, this graph here that you can see compares the costs of inputs compared to the, to the price of beef that we're getting, and as you can see, costs have gone up, but in the long term, prices haven't changed. So what do we do? There's only one thing we can control, and that's our operating costs. And to, do, to help do this, we can use technology. By you, a good example of, of doing this is a remote monitoring system. We've got many customers who installed some of our equipment and have been able to get a return on investment of up to 90%. There's not much that you can do in the beef industry that can give you a return on investment that high. A good example of this is, is our own station. When we get up in the morning now, we just grab our phone or get on the computer and do the water run before we even have breakfast. And if we've got a problem, we get all the tools and we go fix it before it, begs, before it becomes a bigger problem. And we don't forget the Stilsons. <laughs> With benefits like this, why is adoption so low? By best estimates, only 5 to 10% of beef producers are using remote monitoring systems. And when technology is becoming more and more critical, especially for smaller producers who don't have the benefit of economy of scale, I feel sadly that these smaller producers are probably going to start disappearing if they don't embrace change. A good example of this economy of scale I got to see in Ireland, where a, a beef producer in Ireland would lose 130 euro a hectare before they got any government subsidies. One of the main reasons, in my opinion, for the slow uptake of technology is simply that uh, a lot of beef producers are running their stations because it's a nice lifestyle, and that's perfectly fine. I can't think of a better place to raise our two boys. But it does mean that if you're doing this, that you're going to make a different decision when it comes to what you're doing than you would if you were out there trying to run it purely as a business. And there is a cost associated with that. With the average age of producers over 55 in Australia, most of them are happy doing what they're doing, knowing that it'll see them out. It was described to me by, by one as change happening one death at a time. Beef producers are also generally risk averse. And this is understandable due to the seasonal variability in Australia. Technology can often also be perceived as a silver bullet, solving all, all your problems, when in reality it's, it's simply another tool. And most beef, this doesn't help that most beef producers are not tech savvy, if you want to use those words. And they don't necessarily understand technology as well as, as they could and don't realise that it's simply another machine that needs maintenance and has a lifespan. Beef producers are also generally time poor. The irony of this is that they don't have time to look at and trying to improve what they're doing, which means it's really hard for them to work on their business instead of for their business. This, plus the tyranny of distance, and low population density. In the Northern Territory, it's 0.2 people per square kilometre. In the EU, it's greater than 112 people per square kilometre, which makes it really hard for people to get together and discuss ideas. Labour in Australia is also extremely expensive. We were in, um, I remember when we were in Kenya, we went to see a, a cattle station or cattle ranch. And they have, their stocking rate for people is one to 50, living with the cattle. We couldn't even comprehend that in Australia, they, like shepherds. Developing technology for the beef industry also has its own challenges. The beef industry is extremely cost sensitive and expects industrial grade products for consumer grade prices. It's also, in the scheme of things, technology, a very small market. And at the moment, technology adoption in the beef industry is being pushed to the industry by these tech companies rather than being pulled by the industry. And the adoption is not going to change significantly until this is reversed. These challenges can and have been overcome. I saw a really good example of this in New Zealand, that fellow scholar, Richard Fowler's dairy farm. We were sitting there having breakfast. He pulled out his, his smartphone 
clicked on a paddock and ordered fertiliser to be spread. The next morning while we were having breakfast, the truck came, followed the path he'd mapped on his phone, and as it left, he got a message saying, this is where the truck's been. All, we'll have, all without just the click of the tap of a screen. There are a lot of other external issues holding back adoption in the northern beef industry. One of these is poor internet connectivity, as we all know, um, as is a lack of technology, tech standards. So every manufacturer has their own way of doing things, trying to lock you in as a customer, which means that you can't use your, their products with some other system. And there's no, willing to no willingness to change this from the tech industry. It needs to come, to, to change this, the industry itself needs to say this is what we want. Society also doesn't understand agriculture, and this is reflected in the lack of commitment by the government to supporting the beef industry. And a good example of this is, is the constant loss of uh, beef extension officers. So how do we bring about change? Well, the first thing we need to understand is that change isn't passive and that change is uncomfortable. People don't like change and they need a reason to change. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to start with better dissemination of information. We need to make more effort to communicate the benefits of this technology. And this information needs to be readily available and easy to understand. Tech suppliers also need to understand the intricacies of the beef market to avoid consuming, confusing beef producers. Education is also critical to the uptake of technology, with producers needing to understand the benefits and how to apply it to their business. And the industry needs to educate the suppliers on what they need. Trusted advisors are also critical to the uptake of technology. Beef producers don't trust technology companies. So uh, trusted advisors, they help producers make sense of what's available and help them apply it to their business. They help, help break down the tyranny of distance and to spread new ideas. But for them to work, the industry has to overcome the stigma of asking for help. A really good example of these trusted advisors was once again in Kenya. This photo here is at a, a research station with producers and researchers working together on GBVs, genetic breed values, which was absolutely incredible to see. Support networks are also critical to the adoption technology. And one of the most successful models I've seen are discussion groups. These are groups of producers that let them get together and discuss ideas, help them solve each other's problems. They're there, they support the early adopters, which is critical, and they help producers understand how their business is going compared to someone else's business. I saw a really good example of this in Ireland where with the discussion groups uh, formed after the dairy price was deregulated. Change was forced onto these dairy farmers and they needed to try and work out how to adapt and these discussion groups worked very, very well. There are other groups around the world also that can ma are making a big difference. Groups like 4H in the US and Canada and young farmers in New Zealand. We need to attract new people to the industry. And the industry needs to embrace new people with new ideas. And the industry has a, a responsibility to present itself as an attractive career path. A good example of this not working, I got to see in Japan, where I found that 10% of arable land is laying fallow because they simply cannot get enough people interested in agriculture. One of the most direct ways to bring about change is to force it. And this can be done through changes in the law or regulation, but this is very unpopular and risks alienating people. A good, but it also is the quickest way to bring about change. NLIS was a really, really good example of this in the beef industry when it was introduced in 2005. It was extremely unpopular by the majority of producers, but the people who have adapted and changed are now using it for a competitive advantage. It lets them use technologies like remote walkover weighing systems and to do, perform individual animal management. When I applied for my scholarship, the main outcome I hoped to get was perspective, to understand where our industry sits in the world and understand some of the challenges that we are facing and agriculture is facing throughout the world. I now understand that the challenge faced by the beef industry are in many ways no different to the challenges faced by all of agriculture around the world. 
and I am now better informed and able to contribute to the industry through the various committees that I sit on. Do I see what I expected to see? Yes and no. We are not unique in having challenges. And I now understand some of the reasons why we've got the challenges we do in the northern beef industry. But I also see the importance of people like trusted advisors and discussion groups. And I've been able to see firsthand the benefit of adopting technology and adapting to change and how powerful it is for when people are willing to share ideas. And what did I learn? Despite all our challenges, the northern beef industry still is actually pretty good at what we do. In conclusion, the Australian beef industry has its own unique set of challenges. Doesn't matter whether you're a large corporate beef producer or a family owned entity. Technology for the beef industry is available, it's proven, it's cost effective to the business. It helps improve animal welfare, all these benefits. But we need, to strong, we need to communicate the benefits of these, this technology better. We need to remember that it is just a tool, but it's our ability to adapt to change that technology can bring and the ability to identify the best tools for a different, that suit our business. I'm really excited about the future of the northern beef industry, one of the cleanest, most efficient in beef industries in the world. But just because we're good at what we do doesn't mean that we can sit on our hands. We need to keep looking at what we are doing and constantly find ways to improve. One of the ways to do this is to be open and accepting of new ideas and tools. I and others are passionate about the benefits that technology can bring to the beef industry. Thank you.